Hi, my name is Jay Martin. As a prosthetist, we have a unique opportunity and responsibility to innovate. Since every patient has unique needs and challenges, we're constantly faced with having to think outside the box in our clinical approach. This is especially true when we come across unique or challenging fittings, such as patients with a shoulder disarticulation or four quarter levels. Most practitioners do not have very much experience with these challenging cases, and conventional socket designs for this level of amputation leave a lot of room for improvement. I'm excited to share with you one of the greatest advancements in upper extremity socket design. This fabric shoulder socket radically departs from conventional socket methods and provides better suspension, comfort, and functional outcomes than any other socket design available. In 2006, I was invited to play a lead development role on the historic DARPA Revolutionizing Prosthetics 2009 program. This was a phenomenal project to be a part of. The goal of the program was, in essence, to create a fully anthropomorphic robotic prosthetic arm for someone with a shoulder disarticulation level amputation. This advanced arm was to have the same strength and dexterity of a typical soldier. The hand would effectively have the dexterity to play the guitar or piano. The elbow would be able to curl more force than I can at the gym and a powered shoulder joint that would be able to move that weight through the full anatomical range of motion. All of this powered by a control system that was connected to the anatomical through peripheral or cortical nerve implants, allowing multi-joint simultaneous control. One of the roles I was invited to play on the program was to create a man-machine interface that would comfortably allow someone with a shoulder level amputation to use such a highly capable robotic prosthetic arm. I knew that conventional socket approaches wouldn't come close to comfortably managing those levels of forces. Not only was this arm significantly more capable in strength than conventional prosthetics, but by having multi-joint control, including that at the shoulder joint, meant that the translational forces through the socket interface onto the body would be significantly greater. To make the development even more challenging, I was given design constraints that the socket interface could not weigh more than 400 grams, which if you don't think of grams is about the weight of two t-shirts. It could not require any power consumption, and it had to fit within the anatomical envelope, and had to be comfortable to wear all day. Since the extreme capabilities of the robotic arm would translate to extreme socket-induced forces on the body, I knew I had to think down a very different design path than conventional methods of fitting. I started my development by looking closely at the current state of the art, and really tried to understand where those conventional socket designs would fail. Conventional sockets typically use a strap that goes around the sound side axilla to hold the prosthetic socket in place. While these straps can be padded, they remain with a high force over a relatively small surface area. High force over a small surface area becomes a key contributor of discomfort. As the force of the prosthetic arm increases, so does the force over this isolated surface area. Adding padding under the strap does not decrease the magnitude of the force over this limited surface area. As the weight of the prosthetic arm hangs off, it also gives an equal and opposite force at the distal lateral aspect of the socket, as well as the downward force over the top of the shoulder, typically the deltal pectoral groove and supraspinatus areas where the conventional sockets tend to tightly grip into. Conventional prosthetics are rigid or semi-rigid, while the human body is dynamic. The inherent range of motion of the torso and any residual muscle migration issues often cause gapping between the electrodes in the body, resulting in limited control capabilities. I realized quickly that we needed to relook at how prosthetics are fit to the user, discarding conventional socket designs almost in their entirety. As I began working on the new socket design for the DARPA Revolutionizing Prosthetics 2009 program, I focused on resolving these main four issues. One, I wanted to create a truly dynamic socket to match the dynamic nature of the human body. This includes both accommodating for the body's range of motion as well as volume accommodation and weight gain and loss. I wanted to maximize the surface area over as great an area as possible since we were dealing with a tremendous amount of resultant force from the very capable robotic prosthetic arm being developed. I wanted a design that would offer gradual transitions from high force to no force, eliminating point pressures and edge pressures. And I knew that we needed to maintain consistent electrode contact in a much more effective way than we were doing in conventional socket approaches. So I began by increasing the number of straps from a conventional harness system. At first we spread the load through three straps that ran around the sound side, then we went to seven straps to further increase the surface area. 
I quickly realized that the more straps, the better. And so the design quickly turned into utilizing 10,000 straps to most effectively distribute the load over as broad an area as possible. And with that, the design was born. Now, literally every fiber of the garment spreads the loads 360 degrees around the torso. And by doing so, these loads are not just across the opposing side axilla as a conventional harness system gives, but also spreads the loads 360 degrees circumferentially around the entire torso, from belly button to neck, truly maximizing the area of force distribution. In this image, both the white and the blue fabric sections are the same type of fabric, just different colors. In the first generation of this design, the white fabric bridges the stabilizing unit frame like a drum or a hammock, so that as the weight of the prosthetic arm hangs off, the white fabric pushes back against the body instead of the distal aspect of the frame digging in. Likewise, instead of one strap that runs around the sound side axilla, we have 10,000 straps that spread the load from the neck to the belly button 360 degrees around the torso. Think of the socket as the fabric sections and think of the stabilizing unit frame as just a mounting block for the arm to attach and to hold its orientation with respect to the body. We now have a socket interface that is fully dynamic just as the underlying body is dynamic. It's just fabric. We have maximized the surface area to cover almost the entire torso, resulting in negligible force per square inch across the body. We have virtually eliminated any point pressures and we have given gradual transitions of forces at all of the edges. And this entire system is incredibly lightweight and breathable. The entire socket interface as a whole weighs less than about 400 grams. The materials are breathable, cool, and in the end just feels like you're wearing a snug fitting t-shirt. Early in our first generation design, we worked to apply the socket to various related levels of amputation and found that it works equally as well for the forecourt level as it does with the shoulder disarticulation level. Conventional socket designs rely on a bony and muscular lock around the shoulder complex, specifically the deltal pectoral groove and the supraspinatus areas. In conventional socket designs, much of the weight of the prosthetics rest in these isolated areas. This socket design instead spreads the loads in, around the entire torso. So even with a four-quarter level where there is a very limited surface topography to capture loading, the socket locks on incredibly well. We also applied the socket design to bilateral cases and found great success. Here we simply cross-connect the top of one side to the bottom of the other, so that the force of the prosthetic arm hanging off one side broadly distributes the load across the opposing side torso. In this particular case, this gentleman had undergone a targeted nerve innervation procedure, allowing him to have simultaneous multi-joint control using a large number of electrodes, as you can see, integrated into his left side socket. Since the fabric is bridged between the stabilizing unit frame like a hammock, the electrodes remain in perfect contact with his body and there's no gapping issues. This gentleman had excessive muscle migration issues, causing him to have a lot of challenges controlling myoelectrics due to the gapping issues between his body and a rigid socket. Using the fabric-based shoulder socket design, however, you can see how well the electrodes maintain contact with his body. In the continued evolution of innovation, I was recently invited by NASA to transition the shoulder socket compliant force distribution interface technology into the space program, helping them resolve issues in meshing astronauts in wearable exoskeletal robotics together to enhance comfort and functional outcomes. The main machine interface side of exoskeletal robotics have similar challenges as we do in prosthetics, in that they have to manage a large amount of force on the body. Their state-of-the-art methods of man-machine connectivity typically just use Velcro straps to wrap the limb segments into the exoskeleton. As you can imagine, they suffer from similar discomfort issues as in conventional shoulder socket harnessing methods. My work on the NASA X1 program developed a new way of fitting exoskeletal robotics using similar interface designs as I had developed for the shoulder disarticulation level socket design, broadly spreading the forces through lightweight compliant fabric. I've since been invited to participate in two other NASA exoskeleton robotic projects, specifically focused on more of an Iron Man type robotic suit. These other exoskeletal programs have continued to push the limit of man-machine connectivity. The work on the NASA programs has now come full circle to benefit the prosthetic socket designs again as well. My team and I have discovered some fascinating new materials and have created some new methods of more specifically spreading the forces across the body through fabric interfaces.
This newest generation of the fabric-based shoulder socket design now uses much of what we have discovered through the NASA Exoskeletal Robotic Interface programs. This Generation 3 design now uses a new open mesh material. This open mesh increases breathability and increases durability. We have also integrated our unique compliant force distribution cabling within the fabric socket to give us more specific and controlled force distribution, making the interface even more comfortable. And we now have greatly simplified the fabrication and user experience side of the design. The socket system can easily be donned and doffed one-handed by the end user, uh, and the fabric on the socket itself can also be easily donned and doffed from the stabilizing unit frame one-handed, allowing an end user to more easily remove, wash, and replace the fabric by themselves. Let's break down the anatomy of the interface. The stabilizing unit is the component that connects the prosthetic arm to the fabric socket. This stabilizing unit just holds orientation of the system around the body, but does not need to dig into conventional high pressure areas as conventional shoulder sockets. It literally just contours to the surface anatomy with maybe a little compression so there is not a loose fit. Think of the stabilizing unit as a hammock stand for the fabric socket, which would be the hammock to be spanned between. I like to keep the stabilizing unit as narrow as possible, typically just between one and two inches in width. The lamination can be very lightweight, as it is merely just used to hold orientation about the body, and it is not holding the socket forces themselves. You can see in this video just how lightweight and flexible the frame can be. The fabric socket is all of the white fabric that you see in the picture. In our early designs, we had separate fabric sections that span between the stabilizing unit and that which wrapped around the user's sound side. Now the fabric socket is uh, really more so resembles a vest in its design and remains as one continuous piece of fabric. The anterior and lateral sides of the stabilizing unit have a special low profile Velcro on their outside, which the fabric easily and securely attaches to. Think of the fabric section as the actual socket, although instead of using heat guns and grinders to make adjustments to a conventional socket, here the socket adjustments are literally just unvelcroing the fabric, stretching it tighter or looser over the stabilizing unit, and revelcroing it back down. Similar to a hammock, electrodes can also be easily integrated into the fabric material and are consistently pressed against the body, eliminating any gapping issues. The force distribution cable weaves through the fabric and becomes an anchor point to help distribute the load more evenly. This is one of the most effective parts of the design and is largely drawn from our NASA work. The integration of the cable within the fabric allows us to spread the forces more specifically and hence allow the system as a whole to be donned much looser than otherwise, making it all the more comfortable. The low profile buckles connect the two front halves of the socket design together. These can be easily done and doffed one handed, as well as are user adjustable in their tightness. We had originally looked at making the buckles automatically tighten under loads, but in practice find that the user tightens them down upon donning and then doesn't readjust them all day, no matter how much load they're carrying with the prosthetic. This was initially surprising to us, but then we realized that since we were distributing the load so effectively through such a broad surface area, the fabric socket is able to manage a considerable amount of force, even though it is not pulled tight at all. We're actually now using a magnetic buckle closure, which makes donning and doffing even easier one-handed. For whatever buckle is used, be sure to connect it securely to where it connects to the fabric socket either by sewing the strap to the force distribution cable or using a secure three bar. Likewise, where the strap connects to the buckle itself, make sure that the buckle cannot come undone from the strap so that it, as the fabric socket is washed, the buckles won't come unwound from the straps. On the posterior side of the socket, you can see how the fabric remains as one continuous piece, similar to a vest pattern. We also use a pair of buckles on the posterior side to connect the stabilizing unit to the force distribution cable. Here you can see how well the socket holds onto the user. The socket is really not very tight on him at all, and by spreading the forces so broadly, we can achieve an incredibly solid lock without having to have a very tight socket. 
As you can see, the cable directs the forces very specifically, allowing for sensitive areas to have minimal force, such as over the tops of the shoulders. This design eliminates any migration of the fabric onto the user's sound side neck or axilla areas. Both areas now can remain comfortably loose. For female versus male users, simply trim off the middle of the anterior strut of the stabilizing unit, leaving room for anatomy. For these cases, I like to terminate the stabilizing unit frame ends just a little wider than the rest of the stabilizing unit to spread the loads a little broader in this area, as you can see in the picture. Otherwise, keep the rest of the stabilizing unit frame relatively narrow. Here you can see the anterior stabilizing unit trim lines for a female patient as being prepped for casting. Fundamentally, the socket fits just the same between male and female patients. Even with the socket pulled as tight as needed for proper suspension, there's still very little force pushing into the chest, as the forces tend to pull across the front of the chest instead. The patient is able to don the fabric as tight as is comfortable, so we have not seen any issues with discomfort for female users. We're actively working to integrate these technologies into other fitting levels as well. You can now also use the same fitting methodology for a transhumeral accessory suspension system, replacing the typical sound side axilla strap. The transhumeral version uses an almost identical pattern as with the shoulder dysartic version, except that the prosthetic side has an armhole mirroring the sound side pattern. This gives us an anchor point for suspending the transhumeral socket and allows the forces to be spread broadly over the entire torso making it much more comfortable than an axilla strap. When you're ready to order components for any of our socket technologies, you can do so at martinbionics.com or can call directly with any questions. I'm happy to be a continued resource for you however I can be in any of your transhumeral shoulder or forequarter or hip or hemipovectomy le level fittings. I can also be available for a two-day in-person, in-clinic fitting with you and your patient if you want more of a hands-on training for you and your team. Let me share with you briefly about our bikini of hip socket design. This design is equally as simple to fit and fabricate as the fabric shoulder socket for upper extremity, and its design revolutionizes life for people with that challenging level of amputation. This design is less than a third of the size and weight of conventional hip sockets and offers far greater control and comfort than any other hip or hemipovectomy level socket design. If you are not already trained in how to fit the bikini socket design, I can provide DVD or in-person training on it as well, and I'm happy to be a resource for you in any of your hip or hemipovectomy level fittings also, even if it's just to answer questions as needed. I've worked with a number of practitioners who see these hip and shoulder socket technologies not only applied clinically with specific patients, but used to help grow their clinical practice as well. Many facilities are active in doing educational in-services for referral sources. These doctors, physical therapists, and others in the rehab community are typically quite excited to see new socket designs. Educating these other members of the rehab team can be a great way to grow your business. I can even be available to come in and do these in-services firsthand for your local community if that would be helpful for you. Many practices as well do clinics to help educate existing and new patients about these technologies. Now that you have education on this type of socket design, it may be beneficial for your practice in helping to attract potential patients to your facility or to recall pre-existing patients with these levels of amputation. I recently worked with a facility who was able to use these designs to brand their practice through getting local media attention. What differentiates one practice from another is often who is set up with the latest in socket interface and component advancements. If you are interested in pursuing local news stories on clinical fittings, let me know. I'd be happy to help guide you in that pursuit or even come out for an in-person fitting to facilitate it. Even though the population for hip and shoulder patients is very limited, the use of these new technologies can have a significant impact from an image branding standpoint for your practice.